It's the pre party with J. Cal. We are Woo! professional wrestling. I'm building an alliance. You are tuned into the absolute top of the mountain, the ultimate professional wrestling. Alliance wrestling.com. This is the pre-party with J. Cal, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. My name is J. Cal. This is the pre-party. And every Tuesday, we get you pumped up. Every Tuesday, we are here on Twitch and on YouTube live. And, and, and well, this isn't exactly live, and, and, and today we're only on YouTube. That's because I'm on vacation, but... Unlike certain wrestling promotions that have inability to produce live content, I won't leave you hanging. We've already pre-recorded an interview that we'll be doing uh, in just a few minutes with Danny Limelight. And we'll be playing that in just a few minutes. But we, I do want to talk with you about the NWA. I do want to talk pro wrestling. I want to talk National Wrestling Alliance. I want to talk about the race for the chase. I want to talk about the quest for the gold. I want to talk about the 10 pounds of gold. Although that's not on the line tonight. What is on the line tonight is a superpower. The NWA is presenting its superpower. Uh, and, and traditionally, the superpower has always been the show that features a little bit more, right? A little bit more content. The superpowers were uh, initially on the first like three seasons of Power uh, were kind of like the episodes to bridge the gap between one pay per view to the next. Um, they only really actually recorded one. See, they did the first pay per view in uh, October. Well, they did the first tapings in October, did their first pay per view December, then had another one right afterwards in January, and then didn't have another pay per view scheduled until March, April. Actually, April. Sorry, I'm rambling here, but that was supposed to be Crockett Cup 2020. And of course, that never happened. They had recorded the Superpower that was supposed to air in March. Again, that was going to bridge the gap between March into June. Again, that never happened. So today's superpower episode, typically it means that you're going to have a little bit more content. You're going to have some more title matches. And this this uh, superpower is actually geared up to be pretty dang impressive, right? First, we're going to start off with, um, we're going to start off with, uh, they're going to talk more about this championship series. Now, we know that uh, they briefly mentioned it. The poster work is a little misleading. They show Nick Aldis. They show uh, Camille your world's champions, uh, the the 10 pounds of gold, the Burke, obviously. We don't know exactly where this is going, but I'm sure they'll get into a little bit more detail this week. You know, Joe Galley announced it, kind of dropped it, but uh, I guess we'll get more into it this week. Um, of course, uh, they did talk about crowning a new NWA national champion. Now, we got to remember, Chris Adonis, who is in the finals, abdicated that title belt in an opportunity to get into the battle royal to crown a new number one contender for the 10 pounds of gold it was a strictly business power move that went awry but apparently it didn't do too much uh negative lasting effects for strictly business because your boy chris adonis will be in that match and he's taking on jay the god jtg now last week in the podium interview we saw that uh, Chris Adonis basically referenced having Tom Latimer in his back pocket, his insurance policy, if you will. So we have an insurance policy with Tom Latimer and Chris Adonis, and it seemed like, you know, our boy JTG might be left off the hook because, uh, you know, he doesn't have that uh, significant insurance policy. But it turns out Fred Rosser stepped up and accepted that role and said, hey, if you need someone to be in your corner, I'll be there. So it sounds like at least we're going to get a, a very clean match because we know that JTG with Fred Rosser in his corner and and uh, 
Tom Latimer in Chris Adonis's corner, it kind of neutralizes it. So it doesn't look like it'll be uh, doesn't look like it'll be too uh, detrimental. And then of course we have Sal, your pal Sal, who ate a suplex last week that looked extremely dangerous by Colby Carino, looking to really put Sal out of out of competition, right? Not just injure him, but or not just hurt him, but to injure him, right? <clears throat> now their angle started back uh, a couple weeks ago. It was supposed to be Sal Renaro in a qualifying match against uh, PJ Hawk. We're supposed to see Hawk versus Renaro for that qualifying match for the TV title. Um, Colby Carino, not too happy with that, interjected himself and complained that he should be involved in the match. And Sal pointed out that hey, it wasn't uh, <clears throat> it wasn't a, a a match that they set up. That was what the front office set up. So you know your complaint wasn't with Hawk or, or Renaro. Well, whatever happened, they decided to make it a triple threat match that ended up on NWA High Voltage. The match itself was pretty good. Renaro gets the victory when Colby Carino eats a turnbuckle and uh, Renaro was able to get the uh, the DDT on Hawk to, for the for the win for the victory. So we're all set. Renaro is supposed to uh, face Pope last week, and then of course we get that heinous attack by Colby Carino. You know, I always think about like what would his father say, right? What would Steve Carino say, the former world's heavyweight champion? But honestly, this is right in line with what Steve Carino would do. If you don't get the opportunity that you f think you deserve, you go out there and make the opportunity. And as much as I don't care for Colby Carino's actions, they are well within line of what his father would do. Make no mistake about this. This is a Carino. You can't trust him. He's going to sabotage you. He's going to he's gonna get his way. He's going to force his will. And uh, he did that by injuring Sal. However, uh, the title match looks like it's going to happen this week. We're going to get Pope versus Sal Renaro. Um, unless something screwy happens. And, I mean, that's always a possibility, right? There's always an opportunity for some sort of silliness to happen. This is the NWA after all. Um, next up we have Jack Stane revealing all with Crimson. And this is another thing that, uh, again, we talked about this on the pre-party. We talked about this on the Alliance Guys podcast, this poorly manufactured drama. I don't really know what the point of this is. I think most of you agree with me that, uh, Jack Stane and Crimson would be better suited in the ring, destroying opponents, uh, more so than talking about their feelings and as much as I like Jack Stane, I don't feel like this is the right spot for him. He doesn't need to be a, a snuggle bear. He needs to be a vicious animal. And I know uh, he's the first one to tell you that, uh, you know, these fans shouldn't be uh, complaining about how things are being booked in the NWA. But this is this doesn't make sense to me. Uh, if you're here for the drama, that's great. Enjoy. Um, I'll probably fast forward through it. Uh, next up, we have... Um, I guess you can kind of call this like a generations match, right? Because you're taking two former world champions. We're talking about Thunder Rosa and Serena Deep. Both of them held the Burke. In fact, did significantly uh, important things with that title. And have now kind of uh, adopted, uh, is that the right term? Um, mentoring? I, I really don't even know what to call this. Kylie Ray, who's a, who, I mean... For all intents and purposes, had already been signed by AEW, had been signed by Impact Wrestling, uh, should be a star if it wasn't for some uh, personal issues with her, uh, is under the under the umbrella of Serena Deep. Uh, Deep is uh, mentoring her. Sky Blue will be with Thunder Rosa, and the four ladies will square off in a tag team match. I mean, it sounds good to me. It should be a fun match. Hopefully Melina doesn't get involved, but who knows? Uh, Sky Blues has a ton of potential. Um, Thunder Rosa is uh, a part of the Dog Pound uh, Wrestling um, Dojo. The D. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to say it. The Dog Pound Wrestling Dojo in uh, in Texas, where they are training some of the talents that you see appear on SWE Fury, some of the talents you see in Mission Pro, and. Obviously, some of the talents you're seeing now in the NWA. So, it'll be interesting to see how this match plays out. Again, Kylie Ray is already established a women's wrestler. Um, she 
should be fine. I don't think she needs a mentor. Uh, Sky Blue has a ton, a ton of potential. And then, of course, Serena Deep and Thunder Rosa. We think the world of them on this podcast. In fact, uh, Thunder Rosa is probably the best wrestler in the world currently. So this should be fun. It should be exciting. We'll see how it goes. We also have uh, an NWA Lucha Rules match. Now, this this boggles my mind. I don't really understand what's going on. We've got La Rebellion, which is Bestia 666, and uh, Mecha Wolf as a team. And they're facing El Rudo and Hakari. Now, here's where this gets a little weird in the in the history. La Rebellion in Mexico was more than just a tag team. It was an entire stable. And a part of that stable was actually Luke Hawk. He actually ran with these guys. And they were all like a <clears throat> buddy buddy until the NWA happened. <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, La Rebellion kind of put the boots to Hakari. Really put the boots to, to PJ, who had those... Uh, was still showing the effects of the, that damage during the triple threat uh, TV qualifying match. And then last week, uh, them interfering during the uh, makeshift six-man tag match. First of all, calling out Kratos and Stevens and then attacking poor Captain Yuma. Uh, I don't think this thing is going to be settled tonight. NWA Lucha Rules, I'm not even sure what those are. Uh, but it should be interesting. Again, La Rebellion has probably been one of the uh, best tag teams so far that we've had in the NWA. And that's actually saying a lot. When you have teams like the War Kings and you have uh, the End, these guys are looking pretty good. So that, that's all, all supposed to take place tonight. Again, $4.99 on Fight TV. I think it's going to be a fun show. I think it's going to be a good show. I hope you guys are going to watch, and we'll be talking about that on Thursday. I hope you guys will join us for the Alliance Guys podcast on Thursday. Again, if you're digging this Alliance hat or those Alliance t-shirts, you can get those at alliance-wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. You can also follow us on all social medias at the Alliance blog. But before we say goodbye... I have this really special interview we did with Danny Limelight just a few weeks back. Uh, we actually recorded it in uh, preparation for this this week where I knew we wouldn't be here live in the studio. So without any further ado, Danny Limelight. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to the Alliance Guys podcast. My name is Jay Cal, and with me, well, he needs no introduction. I'm talking about Danny Limelight. This guy's on TV more than uh, Friends reruns. You can see him wrestling for AEW. You see him in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. He's going to be in New Japan of America. He, or he already is in New Japan of America. You'll see him everywhere. You, you basically turn on a remote and put on wrestling, and you're going to find Danny Limelight. Danny, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Jay Callum, I'm doing. Thanks for having me back on, man. How's everything? Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, man. We're back, man. We're doing good here, man, and, and, and you know, like, uh, we are finally getting out of this COVID craze here in Southern California. Today, officially, masks are removed, man, so, I mean, we can, we can see each other in person, and it's not weird anymore, and wrestling shows are about to start opening back up all across the state. Wrestling is going to be returning. How, how exciting is that for you, my man? Man, it's, it's exciting, dude, because, like, you know, that means that fans start coming to shows, it needs to get back opening up, you know, I can see people that I haven't seen in a long time, so much has changed in the last over plus years since, since I was wrestling in the Southern California area and stuff like that, and I'd love to see how it feels now coming back to normal and with everything that has happened in my career, stuff like that, I'm just excited, you know, be able to go eat in a restaurant and not worry about having a mask on me, uh, you know, I've been vaccinated for a while now, but still man it's good to just go out and see somebody's actual face you know yeah absolutely i was joking around with my wife and and, and she's like man now i'm gonna have to start putting makeup on again i said yeah them's the breaks isn't it <laughs> so so this weekend is a, a particularly important weekend for you you're heading out to vegas right you're gonna be uh yes. checking out la gente out there in mexico or mexico jesus christ man what's going on with me 
You're going out to Vegas. I started speaking Spanish, and all of a sudden, I think I'm going to Mexico. You're, you're going to Vegas, brother, and out in Vegas, you're going to be uh, competing on two nights for Future Stars of Wrestling. Uh, and this is a big deal for FSW. I mean, you guys can watch them on Twitch. They, they, do, they do reruns on Twitch all the time. They have their videos up on YouTube. But they're doing a pay-per-view, yeah. and it's a big deal. A lot of talent coming in, including yourself, but guys like TJ Perkins, Alexander Hammerstone, uh, Funny Bone. I mean, that roster, Jimmy Jacobs, it's a great roster. And you're gonna, yeah, and this weekend you're going to be a part of it. Uh, tell me about yeah, FSW. Man, FSW, man, that's the, I mean, I don't know many wrestling companies in Vegas, but that's the biggest one that I know. You know, I have a good working relationship with FSW for a while now. You know, I've been there a few times. Love the venue, love the people, love the fans, love the roster. I mean, so much, so much good talent. You know, on that roster, so many people have come out of, you know, Vegas, you know, a lot of my friends are over there, so I'm excited to drive up there, you know, into this 30-man rumble, win that, and then night two, Russell Ice Williams, who's the self-proclaimed coldest champion in the game right now for the No Limit Championship, beat his ass, take his belt, and then main event the show, and then face Hammerstone for the heavyweight title. I'm trying to leave Vegas with two championships, okay? trying to go out there, bet on me. Vegas is a gambling town. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to go out there and put it all on Danny Limelight, put it all on the radioactive floppy, and come home with two belts to add to my collection. I mean, I've been saying it since last year. You know, you buy the dips, right? Right? You you prepare for the worst, but you always bet on the radioactive poppy Danny Limelight. I mean, Facts. we were talking a year ago about how Someone better sign you, and they better make it right. And ever since then, you're just everywhere, man. I mean, we've been watching you on Elevation. We've been watching you on Dark. Uh, you're facing some of the top names in AEW. I mean, you were in the ring with the belt collector, right? The the man who's like Thanos collecting titles like Infinity Stones. You're, you're, you faced off against Kenny Omega, one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet as we speak. How was that experience for you? How was it like facing against Kenny Omega? And did you feel pressure when you were in the ring with him? Oh, uh, man. Dude, first of all, Kenny Omega is hands down the, the best wrestler in the world right now, in my opinion. Um, we're just speaking, you know, facts. Everything that he's done in the last year is insane. Um, but I got to wrestle Kenny Omega on my Dynamite debut back in January. You know, New, New, Year's, night, uh, New Year's Smash Night 2. And then I got to wrestle him again in the main event of Elevation, you know, in another in another six man match. And you know, of, of course you feel the pressure, man. You're stepping into the ring with the AEW World Champion. You know, he's 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 a champ for a reason. Not only he's the AEW World Champion, he's a Triple Leg Champ. He's the freaking Impact Champ. So you know, it's one of those things where you you, you have to you have to show up. Oh, you gotta step up to get pressured, you can't, you know, let the, the, the pressure get to your jitters or whatever the case may be, and, you know, I stepped into the ring with Kenny Omega, and I felt like both times, you know, it was a Danny Lime like Kenny Omega show, you know, I think that we had amazing chemistry, I thought the match was great, I mean, obviously, I want to wrestle Kenny one-on-one, -on -one, but I definitely feel like both times that I wrestled him, you know, it, it only made me better. And, I mean, the talent that you've been facing when you're in AEW, I mean, John Moxley, I mean, I, it's, it, it's interesting for me because like, I know you've been in the business for a while now, but you were watching Moxley on Raw a couple years ago, and now you're yeah. in the ring with this guy, and, and what does it mean when you're when you're I mean these are guys that you were watching wrestling uh, just a couple years ago, now you're yeah. they're they're not just your opponents but they're your colleagues. These are guys you're you're getting close to that same level. How does it feel to be in the ring with these guys? Man, John Moxley, man, he's another one that's one of the best in the world, dude. Former WWE champion, well, WWE Grand Slam champion, right? Former AEW World Champion, current IWGP United States. You know, the guy's done it all. He has, he has a baby on the way with his lovely wife Renee, so I wish them the best in that in that field. Oh, she um, was, the baby yeah. came today. Oh shoot! Well, congratulations. Look at that. As we <laughs> speak, the babies. Congratulations to John Moxley and Renee on, on the birth of their beautiful baby. Um, but like you said, man, I used to watch TV and then stepping into the ring with him, main event being with him on Elevation, and then wrestling him again the following week in a tag match with Eddie Kingston, who's another one that's great. Uh, 
Um, it's just it's just, it's uh, everything that I've done this last year. Be able to get a ring with the best of the best and show the world what I can do. You know. And I mean, it, it, and the list doesn't just stop with those guys. I mean, we're talking Frankie Kazarian. We're talking, uh, like you said, Eddie Kingston. I mean, you're really sharing that ring with a lot of super talented guys, like Christopher Daniels. Um, and then, and then on the flip side, what you're doing at New Japan of America, you're also just facing like these legendary wrestlers, man. And, and I don't, I, I think people are sleeping on the fact that you were in the ring with Satoshi Kojima. I mean that. Yep. That dude, he's one of my personal favorites. I'll, I'll I'll throw that out there. He's a former NWA World's Heavyweight Champion, former NWA Tag Team Champion. He was the first guy to hold the IWGP Heavyweight Championship and that All Japan Triple Crown at the same time. And and yeah. I mean, before he even made his name in Japan as a superstar, I mean, he was wrestling in the states and was the MLW World Champion. And and you're sharing the ring with this guy. And and I mean, he's. He's not a young chicken by any stretch, but this dude could still go, and you're in the ring with him. Tell me about that. Tell me about those experiences. Man, you know, when you when you step into the Serenity Blue, you know you're going to be in there with a warrior, no matter who it is, right? Anybody in New Japan, that they're, so they're, good. they're super talented. They bring the fight. But when you're in there with someone like Kima, with all the athletes, you know, it's a big feel fight. You know, there. Tagging with my people, big break those. Kojima, who's a leg, then you got Carl Frederick, you know, and, and now you're stepping off in the main event of New Japan's programming. It, 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 I tell you why, he called himself Cold Larry. That Larry he hit me with was not cozy at all. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, he's a he's a bad dude. Like I said, man, he he has done so much in the business, and I mean, now he's. It's kind of funny we were talking about AEW and how you know, they seemingly have kicked down that that door, and yeah. uh, they kicked down that door, and now I, I mean you're seeing guys come from Japan. I mean, uh, we we got Kojima wrestling for Impact, and he's showing up in New Japan of America. We saw Nagata not too long ago show up in. Uh, uh, AEW, and then he's in New Japan of America as well. Like, is this just one of those most exciting times in wrestling that you've seen, or, or, or how do you feel about seeing all the talent just kind of go wherever the hell they want? Yeah, hands down, it's been the most exciting, at least for me and my career. Um, you know, the last time that I can think of something this cool happening, I was a kid, you know, when the invasion happened, you know, but, but now that people are coming on over so impact to AEW you, know, you have guys from AEW walking over to impact have you know impact I've been over to New Japan Honor come and I got New Japan going to bring on that's AEW you know, it's just yeah people are going everywhere you know what I'm saying you got LW guys mix this sort of thing as well and so it's so much fun because at the given night you wrestling somebody from a different company you know you could be wrestling somebody who's the man in one place you know and it's fun it's, it keeps it fresh it keeps the fans I think it's an amazing time for wrestling and happy to be a part of it you know talk about the forbidden door you know I'm one go walking to and I go back and forth New Japan um, and so it's 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 dope man it's 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 been exciting you know I've, in the last two years you know I've wrestled with Impact AEW and New Japan and you know, as the years go on, as it continues and they back up, like I'm trying to hit more companies. I'm trying to go check out Power. I ain't never been there before. I'm trying to go have it at W with Triple A, make my way back to Triple A, which I was there two years ago as well. You know, and it, it, man, I, I want to see what Orlando, Florida is like. <laughs> well, in in the the crazy thing, you you bring up you bring up the NWA and your boy, you know. Slice Boogie's there right now, and he's holding it down. You know what I mean? Like, he's getting some big wins over some big guys, and it's uh, it's pretty impressive. And I just I always wonder, like, what would happen if they brought the rest of the bodega to the NWA? Because I know Papo Esco's down, and and yeah. you're saying you're down. I mean, I think that bodega could come in and really, really wreck some shit if you don't mind me saying. Yeah. Be because uh, you guys are are multifaceted. I mean, you're still holding the United Wrestling Network tag team titles. You're, you're kind of using the free bird rule where, where Boogie yep. can defend the title, you can defend the title, 
Of course, Papo could hold the title. And you guys are just being dominant. I mean, let's be honest. When we were talking about what you were going to do a year ago in the United Wrestling Network, that, that still is here, man. You guys are still putting it down. You're still, like, yep. just holding it down. Tell me about United Wrestling Network. Tell me about those tag team titles. And, and where are you going to take them next? Man, honestly, man, we've been champs for almost 200 days now, I believe. You know, seven successful title defenses, which is, what, basically a, t- a successful defense a month. In a, in a, um, and, you know, we said we were going to rob the house. We said we were going to become champs. We did that. We've been doing that. Nobody can stop us. We want to wrestle the best, man. We want whoever they got out there, whoever thinks they're a tough tag team that wants to come throw hands to the bodega, come bring it, man. We ready, whether it's me, Papa, or a slice. You know, and if, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, you want to bring the bodega in, that slice, all you got to do is open that back door, slice me with the ski man. I mean, and again, we're, we're just talking, we're bouncing all over the place, but I mean, this is so crazy that we're in a, in a world where this is all possible. I mean, when I grew up watching wrestling, like, you know, you had a guy signed to the WWE, you had a guy signed to the WCW, and yeah, occasionally when contracts would expire, you'd see them jump ship, but now it's not like that. You're not really held to that where there's so much freedom in your ability to work in these different environments. Tell me about working for Dave Marquez. Tell me about working at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Uh, we, we've said it in the past. Uh, we're both fans of Marquez. But tell yeah. me, how has it been in you know going through this pandemic and, and starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Oh, uh, man, it's been great, man. Marquez is one of my favorite people in the world. He's definitely uh, I'm, he's, you know, you know, he's one of the guys that I hold responsible for my career. All the guys that, that bet on me or anybody else did. Take a chance with this kid from birth. You know, the relationship has only grown strong with somebody that I can talk to at about whatever I have to do questions on, business side of things, business side of things, about that. Hey, about this, what do you think about that? And somebody that I can reach out to and know is there for me, man. Somebody I respect a lot. Um, and I'm glad of everything happening with Atlanta coming up, you know, more T V stations adding to the program, more fans and new ideas. I can't wait to see what we do next. I know that, you know, that there's a good working relationship there. He's been able to go even with the busy schedule that I've had this year. He's been able to work around it with me. It's been great, man. But good things to And I, I know that uh, recently there were some guys from Memphis showing up in Hollywood. I mean, has there been any discussion about you guys taking the bodega on the road, maybe defending those United Wrestling Network tag team titles in Memphis, maybe even going down to Atlanta when those tapings happen? Oh yeah, there's been some talks about Atlanta and other things, but you know, I I don't want to speak on that right now because I feel like not the time and place yet. But but I'm sure if if an opportunity presents itself, they go pack all of our shit up and we'll fly over to somebody at just go do that. But they say Atlanta, Memphis, Texas, they want to go run championship wrestling, Tijuana championship wrestling, Puerto Rico championship wrestling from Canada. I don't care. Wherever it's at, I want to be at. That's awesome. And and so you work in these different environments. How different is it from going from one office to the next? I mean, we, we know that Championship Wrestling from Hollywood and New Japan of America tape in the same place, but obviously it's a different office, a different set of, yeah. uh, you know, a front office you have to deal with. And then, of course, you go into Daly's place. It's different when you're there. Uh, dealing with the AEW folks, and then of course, you know, future stars of wrestling, and all these other independents that you're checking out. How is it working with the different offices, and is it is it as different as we would all think it is? Yeah, I, everywhere, everywhere is different. You know, everybody, every company is different. Impact, and then Hollywood, Hollywood is different. AEW, um, and all those are different from indie. We have wrestling in this environment, different kind of atmosphere in the locker room different kind of atmosphere in the ring, fans. Um, I just, you know, something that I learned is I was adapting over the time, so I try to as possible. I try to adapt to the counties and that's my environment. And I've been doing a good job at that, just being able to come in and just do Danny Limelight, you know? And so I just want to keep it that way going forward. Wherever I pop up next, whatever show I'm at, you know, next week or the week after or a month later, you know, I just want to be able to show up, you know, respect those that need to be respected, show up, and that's what matters to most. So, and then, you know, as this whole pandemic is starting to just, you know, pull back and we're seeing, like, at least in California where we live, 
you know, they're, they're, I mean, the mask mandate, like I said, it, it's coming to an end today and more live wrestling is happening all across the country. Uh, tell me, man, like how, how do you feel about, you know, certain wrestling promotions locally are going to start running again. Like the last time you and I talked, you kind of said, Hey man, if it's not the United wrestling network in California, I'm, I'm exclusive to championship wrestling from Hollywood. Yeah. But now, I mean, there's some big ballers kind of coming back. And when I'm talking about pro wrestling gorilla and, and a lot of the guys that used to work for pro wrestling gorilla are now no longer available. And I'm talking uh, a lot of the, the, the main event for AEW, a lot of those guys came directly from pro wrestling gorilla. Uh, you know, there's guys locked up to ring of honor guys locked up with MLW, even guys locked up with the NWA. Uh, there's always been that adage that the cream rises to the crop, the top of the crop. Yeah. Cream <laughs> rises to the top. <laughs> and you certainly, my friend, I, I would say are one of those rising stars. And, and it's funny to say that because you've been doing this, you've been doing it for about a year now, proving everybody right that you're, I mean, you're, you're advancing to the top. What do you think about a run in pro wrestling gorilla? Do you think pro when pro wrestling gorilla comes back, is that an opportunity that you would like to pursue? hundred uh, percent. I want to be part of Bola. I want to wrestle. I don't care. You know, put it in ring with I feel like this last year, I've been able to stand out and showcase my talent on many different platforms. And I feel like PWG is a good thing. I mean, again, when we talked last year, you had this checklist, man. Like we were saying, like, you wanted to live an abundant life. And it looks like, you know, from, from social media anyways, it looks like you're doing that. You said man. you wanted to, to show up in AEW and you wanted to show out. You You're doing that. You're you're one of the, the dominant faction in in New Japan of America with the Filthy Family. You're wrestling superstars. I mean, guys that you grew up watching. Uh, yeah. You're still holding it down. Championship wrestling from Hollywood as a champion. I mean, this weekend you're going to be in future stars of wrestling, looking to win two titles, looking to try to take home uh, Danny two belts. What's next for you, man? I mean, what what is there left to accomplish? Where do you want to go? Because man, I know so you have a fan base out there. Where, where do you want to go? There's so much to accomplish still, man. Like, I'm never satisfied. I'm always hungry. I always want more. Um, yes, we had a checklist. We talked about it. And every everything that was on that list, I surpassed, I believe. I'm living an abundant life. I feel blessed. My daughter's doing amazing. You know, she, since we last talked, she's put two more commercials. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's killing it. Um, my film, Joe Rib, we kind of barely touched on that a little bit the last time. I think the final post-production is going to be done by the end of the month, and it's already going to two action film festivals. So like, there's a lot of things that first that's, that's going the way I want it to go, and there's still more things that I want to do. Um, obviously, there's more places that I want to wrestle. Um, I want to sign a major contract, you know, full time to a major company. I want to, I want to, you know, I, I shoot, man. Look, I'm in two video games now. The, the AEW All Elite GM Mobile app. The Wrestle Code announcement for that. I'm going to be doing the, the motion capture for that video game as well. Uh, it's it, with Virtual Basement, and it's just, it's just so much more. I want to write a book. I want to. I want to freaking. I want to wrestle in, in in a whole bunch of different. I want. I want to wrestle in the UK. I want to wrestle in Canada. I haven't done that yet. Um, and I want to make my debut in those other companies that I haven't been. Like I'd like to wrestle at Ring of Honor, NWA, MLW, you know, WWE, of course. Like I, I, I want to. I want to do it all, man. I, I'm not gonna close any doors to any opportunities. Yes, this last year has been amazing. It's been phenomenal. I'm the 2020 SoCal Wrestler of the Year, the 2020 Most Outstanding Wrestler of the Year. You know, all that is great. I love it. All the fans have been amazing for me, to me. Excuse me. All the fans have been amazing to me. Um, and I do feel like I did everything that I could have done this last year. I've done it. But there's still more work to be done. I'm never going to place it, and I'm always hungry. So, yes, Jay, to answer your question, there's so much more left work to get done. Well, you know, you're still a young man, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to push you off the pasture by any stretch of the imagination. You still absolutely have a lot to accomplish. I mean, uh, we, we've talked about it multiple times, your United Wrestling Network tag team titles, but there, there's United Wrestling Network TV title, the Hollywood Heritage title. There's still, yeah. you know, at some point down the road, there will be a United Wrestling Network heavyweight champion, or I guess it's just the world championship is what they're calling it. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for you just in your own backyard, but I don't feel like you're you would be content with just wrestling in your backyard. Uh, you've wrestled in, like you said, you want to go to uh, the UK, you want to wrestle in um, Canada, and there's uh, surely a lot of opportunities as uh, the whole travel restrictions drop. You know, you're going to have these opportunities 
present themselves, but where specifically would you like to go? I mean, are you scouting promotions and how does that work? Do you, do you send out feelers to them? Do they send feelers out to you? How does that all happen? Well, there's been a lot of emails that I've been receiving from a lot of companies over the last eight months or so. You know, I wasn't really accepting independent booking for a while. I kind of was just focusing on TV stuff. Um, and there's been some companies that I've recently reached out to as well. I'm not going to say any names, but there's been some big companies and there's been some independent companies that I've reached out to. There's been some emails from bigger companies, you know, back and forth communication and stuff like that. And I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just riding this wave, man. Like, I'm waking up, working out, I'm eating good. Um, you know, I'm on the grind. I'm doing these interviews. You know, I'm continuing to write scripts. I have another script that I'm writing right now that's coming along great. I've been making some calls to a few people that be a part of this one as well. And I'm just, you know, just waiting for that for that opportunity, man. Every every opportunity I've been given so far, I feel like I've earned. And every time I go out there with that opportunity, I feel like I, I, I go out. You know, I pass that test. I, I do the best that I can do. And I feel like it's well received by the fans. And so going forward, that's all I can do. You know, answer an email if it's something that works for both parties. Because I know that I could be an asset to any company I'm a part of. If it's a, if it's a neutral, you know, two-way street, then I'm with it. So, you know, I've seen some of the, the photos, and, and and I know that you've you've been putting on some masks. You're 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 a bigger wrestler than you were a year ago. Uh, how much dedication, how much time in the gym are you putting in to to to, to, to grow like that? Because I know, I mean, you you were definitely a, a junior heavyweight, but as you're you know in the last year, your body is kind of growing too. I don't even know if you're technically still a, a junior heavyweight because I know that you put on so much mass. Yeah, so last year when we talked, I was 100 pounds. Right now, this morning, I weighed in at 176 pounds. Um, so about 20-something pounds right there that I put on. Um, I spend about an hour, hour and a half in my six-day splits. I'm working out six days a week. Three of those days, I work out twice a day. So it's a total of nine workouts a day. I'm doing cardio in the morning now. Um, I'm swimming as well. Just, just I'm eating a lot healthier than I was eating. You know, I'm a huge wings fan. So I love Buffalo Wild Wings and pizza and stuff like that. Kind of been cutting back on that little by little. Um, so if anybody knows any meal prep companies in LA that want you would like to recommend me, you know, to just pick the DMs and recommend me meal prep companies that you guys use, I'd like to try to find one out there that can help me because my schedule is kind of real busy for me to be cooking and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I don't know if I'm a junior, I think I'm still a junior heavyweight, you know. Um, speaking of which, you know, maybe some junior heavyweight championships this area around my waist, you know, maybe the NWA will bring the junior heavyweight championship back. I don't know. We talked about that before. Man, so. I, I mean, I, I feel like I was yelling into the Grand Canyon, man, because I, I was talking about it. I said, hey, Billy, bring back the junior heavyweight title. And then, of course, that roster got bigger, and they added just heavyweights all across the board. It's like, I mean, Matt Cross is there. You've got yeah. Colby Carino there now. You've got P.J. Hawk there. Uh, you know, they 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 have room for a cruiserweight division if they're junior heavyweight division if they want to bring one back, um, and certainly with uh, opportunities to book guys like you, um, I think that would really uh, it'd be interesting to, to say the least. I'm the uncrowned junior heavyweight champion after I beat Barrett Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Barrett's gonna come after me for that. You know that, right? He's yeah, gonna come after me for that one. Barrett's a great guy, man. Barrett's great. So with, with the last year and everything changing, you know, now we're starting to sense that normalcy again. How's it been uh, in the locker room? You know, I, I mean, theoretically, everyone's getting vaccinated. Everyone wants to be clean. Everyone wants to be safe. But how is it walking into those locker rooms? Uh, is it is everything feeling good and safe? I mean, are you still having concerns or is it all good? It's all good with me, baby. I, I never, I never pay attention to the negativity if it's there. You know, I, uh, I tend to do me. I walk with my head up always. I can move in a room full of vultures, and I can move, you know. But it doesn't feel like that way always. You know, it, it's, it's good, man. There's some good people out there that I, that I, that I consider friends and stuff like that. And going forward, you know, I just know who to surround myself with and who not to surround myself with. Were you surprised as most of the fans were when some of the, when the WWE released a lot of those names that uh, became free agents? Yeah, man, I feel like it sucks every time someone loses a job. But I, I, I definitely was surprised at some of those names. You know, I thought those guys were great. You know, Buddy Murphy, obviously Black. You know, 
even Braun Strowman, he was just wrestling for the, the heavyweight championship like the month before. So, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know how that works or why certain people are released. You know, I, it just sucks to hear about it. But if we're talking about matches, man, me and Buddy Murphy somewhere, let's make it happen. Like, that, <laughs> that's like I want to throw down with you know. Yeah, I, I could see that uh, that match might be uh, you know match of the year candidate right off the bat, and you guys haven't even yeah. stepped in the ring together. Yeah. I actually owe him an ass because he killed me in Fortnite. <laughs> Even it was me, him, and JT Dunn, and, and he like sniped me or some shit like that. So I owe him. One. <laughs> so does the 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 world of esports is now blending into the world of professional wrestling? You guys are just at least feuds are starting in in Fortnite, and now they got to be settled out in the ring. That's dope. I I that's the best, that, that, the best that, way to. The best way to do it. That, I mean, you got an angle already set up, bro. It's just you need a place to work now. Yep. PWG, Danny <laughs> Lime Life, Birdie Murphy. Hey, somebody's. Let's open, let's open the show just like that. Somebody, <laughs> Somebody's hearing that, and somebody's thinking, man, put me in contact with somebody at uh, PWG. Super Dragon, where you at, brother? That would be a fun match. You know, I know I, I have a friend of a friend who was very close with, with the guys at Pro Wrestling Gorilla, trained with those guys back in the day, and his his description of Super Dragon was always this. When when Super Dragon books Pro Wrestling Gorilla, they're not looking for the names that are going to draw. They're not looking for like the most unique characters. They're looking to put on the best professional wrestling they can, period. And if, if they sell 100 DVDs or 5 DVDs, they don't care. They, that's the business models. They just want to put on the best wrestling on the planet. How does Danny Limelight fit into that? Do you consider yourself one of the best wrestlers on the planet? I feel like I am. I feel like this last year, I've been in the ring with the best wrestler on the planet. I've wrestled Kenny Omega several times. I've wrestled John Moxley several times. I've wrestled the Brian Cage. I've wrestled the Matt Seidel's. I've wrestled the, the SCU's. I've wrestled guys that have been on PWG before, and I've had banger matches with them. You can look at it at AEW. You can look at it at New Japan. What more proof do you need that I can hang with the best of the best? I mean, just look at my track record this last year, the people that I've wrestled. Just walk, go watch the matches. It's all over. You know, YouTube with AEW Dark or AEW Elevation or on Dynamite or on NewJapanWorld.com. Go look at all the people I've wrestled. Go watch the matches. The radioactive poppy belongs everywhere. I was waiting for that. I was just trying to give you the opportunity to do the mic drop because I knew you had it in you. I knew it was coming. <laughs> so I love you. You don't. <laughs> we, look, look. Let's be honest, man. There's not a whole you. You make yourself very available for social media. A lot of dudes are interviewing you. I appreciate that. I consider that hustle. I see you out there. You're trying to get your name out there. Not only are you wrestling in the biggest wrestling promotions on the planet, but you're out there hustling to get your name out there. That's something that a lot of talent people, uh, a lot of talented wrestlers will do. For some reason, they shy away from interviews like these, and I've I've always scratched my head at that because I'm not saying that my voice is the loudest one in the room. I'm not saying that my voice is going to get you booked anywhere, but. Someone somewhere will hear this and think, I'm going to check out that Danny Limelight. I'm going to check out that Danny Rivera. I want to see what this kid's all about. Yeah. And, of course, <laughs> your repertoire speaks for itself. The, like you said, Elevation, Dark, uh, United Wrestling Network, Primetime Live, uh, New Japan World, Fight TV. I mean, for crying out loud, this weekend, you're going to wrestle against Ice Williams, who's someone I've seen in Primetime Live. I, someone I saw in the United Wrestling Network, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. And he's a talented guy. I yeah. think for sure you guys are going to put on a hell of a match. We're going we're gonna to steal the show, for sure. We're going to steal the show. And that's saying something when you got, like, TJ Perkins booked for the card. You got Alexander Hammerstone booked for that card. Who's someone out there that you haven't faced? I know Leo Rush recently retired. I know that you guys needed to have that dance that just never happened in primetime live. But tell me about some of the talents out there that you, you would like to face, people that you would like to wrestle. Man, Leo Rush, that's my boy, man. I'm tired, I can say, you know, he's got mad love for that dude. I hope that he made his most better game, man. man. Uh, people that I want to wrestle, I want to wrestle Pac. That's the number one guy right now. Um, I'd love to wrestle, you know, JT. 
He's another guy on my list. We talked about Buddy. That's a guy on my list. Um, let me try to think of other people that would like to wrestle one. Well, I like to wrestle one on Um, you know, Chris Jericho. That, that I would love to wrestle. And then obviously when it all comes back around, one on Kenny Omega. Selfishly, I'd like to see you in the ring with Scorpio Sky because he's he's somebody I consider one of my guys too. I, I've I've been a big fan of Scorpio Sky since the beginning, since he was wearing the he, mask, you know. So he's he's someone. Tonight I'm wrestling his tag partner Ethan Page on AEW. Dog. There it is. So, and Ethan, I Ethan, I wrestled at one time about five years ago. The match. Was, if you look up Danny Lamb, Scorpio Sky. It was at some rinky dink indie promotion on YouTube. I was six years old. I was, looked a lot different. I was skinnier, and he looked a lot different. You know, it was a long time ago. We had one match, and it was it was fun, man. I'd love to wrestle Sky again. He's great. So as we're getting towards the end of this interview, because I know you've got some things you got to take care of. You're a very busy man. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, you, you know, I, I always like looking at the industrial side of wrestling where you guys get uh, creative on how you earn money, how you put more cash in your pocket, Obviously, yeah. everyone knows about Pro Wrestling Tees, and you could get a Danny Limelight shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Danny Limelight. You're doing cameos, too. Yes. How's that working out for you? I know I mean, I mean, know that your, your, your stock is rising in the world of professional wrestling, but no disrespect intended, you're, you're not Rachel from Friends. How does that work? How do, are people coming out and, and saying, yo, get, give my girl a shout-out on her birthday? I mean, what's going on with Cameo? Tell me about yeah. that. Cameo.com backslash Danny Limelight, man. I'm doing birthday videos. I'm doing shot videos, man. Um, having normal conversations with people. Uh, it, it started off a little bit slower, but it's been um, it's been fun. And just talking to people, just they said advertisement they want me to say things of that nature. But one thing else that I would do on there that I haven't really been putting out there's it, you know, love Spider Man and his birthday's that I'll put on my spider suit and give him a shout out from Spider-Man as well. So that's something else that I'll be doing on my cameos. Um, obviously, um, these films that I'm working on, one the film festivals in Amazon Prime, to, 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 you know, pay, you know, so there'll be some revenue coming in that. Merchandise we talked about. Um, and just grinding, baby, you know, just just always always grinding, man. I, I love I love the hustle. You know, one of my favorite movies, Paid in Full, and there's like a lot of that movie that I love the hustle. I love the grind. That's me. I love, love the hustle. So I thank you so much, Jake, Al, for having me, bro. You're the man. It's been three interviews in one year. You know, the next one, who knows what we, and the, that one change, so who knows what's going to happen the next time we get to talk, man. Well, I, I yeah, man, I, I'm nothing but positive vibes for you, my friend. Uh, you're out there grinding. You're out there killing it. I did have to ask you one last question. Because I know you're a sci-fi guy, you're a st you're a comics guy, you're a lot like me. You're tuning into Disney Plus. You're watching yes, WandaVision. You're watching uh, the Falcon uh, Sol uh, the the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Loki. You're watching Loki. Uh, you know. Tell me about Loki. Are you enjoying it? I mean, the first episode in. Are you in? Yeah, I'm in. 100 percent in. Have you been in on all of them? Has there been a show I, up there I, yet that you didn't like? All the Disney Plus shows, like the WandaVision, the Falcon, Winter Soldier, I loved all of them. I, I think Loki's going to be the best out of all of them. Which is crazy because everything's been so good. Yeah. And I just have a feeling that this this show is about to take it to the next level. And then I got to ask you about, uh, I got to ask you about uh, Falcon and Winter. I already got my tickets to Black Widow for next month. When it comes I, out. I, I saw you posted that. I'm like, man. I gotta get on it, man. Danny Limelight's out geeking me. Um, I, I saw uh, with with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. You know that they talk a lot about that industrial military complex. Did you relate to to uh, you know the the other Captain America? Did you relate to uh, that character in USA? some of that? Um. Yeah. Cause I mean, his his approach was noble, right? Like, he wanted to be the best soldier, right? His approach reminded me of the leaders that in the military that I that I came across that 
that care so much about their accomplishments and care so much about their ranking and where they stood. It's like, oh, I'm this rank, so you have to listen. Like, he was very much, I'm Captain America, so what I says go. And I, I, I couldn't really mess with that, you know? I kind of like the Steve Rogers approach to it. Even though a lot of people think Captain America is boring, I like the, I'm just going to do the good thing. I'm just going to do what I got to do because it's the right thing to do, whether they like me or not, you know? I, I always, when I was in the military as a leader, that's, uh, that's how I led by example, you know? I don't like to do as I say, not as I do type of leadership. So I couldn't really relate to that guy, but I definitely love seeing, you know, Sam Wilson take over the man. So I think his suit was dope and the way that he carried himself throughout the whole. He didn't want the shield. He didn't need it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't want that responsibility. And I felt like something more than I could do. Well, as always, Mr. Rivera, Danny Limelight, it's always a pleasure speaking to you, my friend. Thank uh, you, Jake. Again, wishing you nothing but the best. Hoping to see you at two belts come Monday morning. And, yes, uh, sir. All my best to you, sir. Much love, J. Cal. Stay safe, man. Till next time. Yeah. And you what? guys can follow Danny Limelight on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Danny Limelight. Again, pro wrestling tees, Danny Limelight, cameo.com, Danny Limelight. He makes it very easy for you. Even if you're ignorant, you can find him. And, uh, Anywhere. I'm like, every Instagram, Twitter, everything. It's just Danny Limelight, the one and only. Thank you. J. Cal, I appreciate you so much. Send my love to the family. And I hope to see you at an indie show soon, hopefully PWG. We'll be putting it down, brother. <laughs>